All right. What is up, everyone? Welcome to a Fantasy Fishing Live here on this awesome Monday evening. You'll notice that we're a little short-staffed this <laughs> evening to start off. Bailey will be joining us hopefully here shortly. Same with Justin. Um, but we are sarah list tonight and boomer list. They are traveling. We're fighting through some technical difficulties, so we're trying to figure that as we go. But I figured let's get the show started, you know. Harris Chain's coming up, Florida tournament in April, which is odd for Bassmaster, which um, I don't think any of us really know, have an idea what's going on, if we're going to be questioning are there still spawning fish or not. So that's going to be one thing that we're going to dive into here shortly. We do have an elite series angler who's starting off his elite series career hot, joining us to kind of give us a breakdown on the Harris Chain of Lakes, which is going to be exciting once he joins in here. But, um, Brennan, how's it going, man? It's going great. My Iowa Hawkeyes got uh, second in the nation yesterday, which sucks. But oh man, um, good game. From that, I watched it, dude. Who didn't? Who didn't? It was it was really cool. Um, super pumped just to see him get to that point. And honestly, the progression of women's sports in general was was pretty rad to be a small part of. So. Um, that was cool, but fishing. You know what's impressive about the whole thing, real fast before we get into fishing, yeah. is the fact that the Hawkeyes, not just the Hawkeyes, like I think both of the final four games, right, like had better attendance than the men's side, mm -hmm. which I think is something which is crazy to talk about. But Caitlin Clark single handedly has basically put college basketball for females on like the national map and it, it was exciting to see for women's sports. I, I completely agree. I just wasn't going to say it as an Iowa fan because I feel like the nation's already like annoyed enough hearing the name Caitlin Clark, but like, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. It's but yeah. Oh, Fishing wise, man, was pretty jacked about yeah. this Harris chain though. I am a little, um, I don't know. This is going to be a weird one. Like, I, I feel like this is going to be a, a little wrench in the system because it's Florida, but maybe not the Florida that we're used to. Um, right. So I don't know. It, it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. Yeah. I mean, what do you expect to see, right? Like what, what do you think is going to happen? Is everybody going to be grouped up in one area of one lake? Cause there's multiple lakes that are open. They're closing one of them after this event to work on, I think like a lock I heard, which is what Griffin maybe is it Griffin? Do I have that oh, right? I, I, I don't know that, that that part of the dynamic. Yeah, there's so many of those little lakes, and who are commenting on our side here can kind of chime in here if they know. But like, I'm just curious, what lake is it going to be? One out of is somebody going to run all over the place? Like, Florida events are always extremely interesting, and I and I'm really curious if. There's going to be fish on bed still. It's a new moon cycle, so maybe not. Yeah, or or maybe pushes the you know the the final ones right to doing what they got to do. I guess I, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I, I gotta believe that like there's not going to be as much of that at at a shallow bed fisherman's disposal as there was uh, a few weeks ago or a month ago. Absolutely for sure, or beyond that, right? Um, yeah. so I don't look for that to be heating up by any means, but, um, I think it'll probably still be available. So somebody that's, uh, boots on the ground, like Kyle Patrick, obviously might be able to confirm that for us. Um, yeah, it's going to so, be interesting. I don't know, to really see. interested to see what he says that might change everything that I thought about my picks. So I, I I'll be honest, like that's where I'm at. <laughs> might be changing picks here on the fly. I mean, yeah, I'd be we'll real see. curious to see We'll have to go check on like Drew Cook or Drew Benton's uh, social media, right? Because if they got big ones and you can see like shallow water or a bank near them, they're probably catching a fish or two off bed somewhere. But it's also Florida and those fish live shallow to mid range and deep all year round. So, right. It's um, right. absolutely. I really don't know what to think of this tournament at this point, except for it's probably going to be exciting and. Is it going to be spawn? Is it going to be another forward facing event? Or is it going to be guys just chucking and winding in grass? And kind of do we see the old school guys with quotations, right? Arising to the occasion and catching a bunch yeah. of fish. I, I'd like to believe so. And honestly, look, the way I have my picks configured, I'm I'm kind of planning for a little bit of both. 
Um, and if I'm being honest, I, I kind of try to always do that based on the event. Now, if it's like a full blown pre spawn event, I don't know. Like, I, I don't need any shallow flippers. Like, I'm all live scope at this point, pure, honestly. Right. Um, maybe you shouldn't listen to my advice either because my my fantasy team's doing very poor. Right. <laughs> now. Um, yeah. I, I think me and you are both rounding out like the bottom of the barrel right so okay cool yeah, yeah, yeah so just like mute this part everybody listening i'm just kidding um hopefully there's a little <laughs> bit of at least thought provoking stuff you know in in this dialogue here but um i don't know i i i gotta believe like we're gonna see a jerk bait in this i i wouldn't have said that even for th you know three years ago maybe um but like why won't there be forward-facing sonar guys throwing jerk baits you know staying giants offshore looking at them why won't that happen yeah. another technique that you might see come out that we don't see much in florida because the events are usually earlier might be like a carolina rig like or a big worm mm -hmm. right on the offshore shell beds that for sure shell bars absolutely yep. to take off so yep, as no those question. Fish migrate back out so Low but um yep. like i said we're having technical difficulties that we're working through here but this is a great time to get on Omnia Premium Pro. They have that grass layer built into the software that you can see where all the grass is. And if I could have brought it up here, Bailey had it all preloaded when we were talking about it. And his computer basically shut down, but it broke down each one of the lakes on the Harris chain and showed where the grass is. And it's based off, like, I think recent satellite imagery and the way they graph the lakes and people upload it from CMAP. So it's something you may want to look into if you're down in the Florida chain or fishing grass anywhere around the country, your lake might be on the Premium Pro app and it might just help you catch a few more bass. So we'll get back here. And, but yeah, so kind of backtrack a little bit, right? Like Bassmaster Classic. Did anything happen that you didn't expect to happen? Or did you think that what happened was actually what was going to happen? Justin Hamner just going down with the jerk bait. Well, I think, well, maybe we'll talk about it, but I think I had Hamner on my, my drain the lake at least. I, I can't remember if I had him. We're going to find out if I had him on fantasy or drain the lake. So I, I did kind of have a feeling about Justin Hamner, um, but more specifically within that Justin Hamner pick was like the, the thought that forward facing sonar was going to play a critical role in this and ultimately it did um which no surprise a lot of pre-spawn fish like naturally that's going to occur right but um i will say the shallow water stuff did surprise me a little bit um i was in tulsa i, I was at the classic and i gotta tell you um from what i recall two maybe three or no two of the days were like pretty crappy weather man like um, they, they need wind out there at Grand, I realize that, but it wasn't, it, I, I will say this, it wasn't the conditions that um, I wouldn't have anticipated for like that type of bite to fire um, up shallow. Um, yeah. So that was something interesting about Grand that I didn't know before. Yeah, usually like you'd think if it was sunny with a a slight win that jerk bait bite would be going off, but I didn't give it credit to Megabass and coming out with that mad shad color before virtually anyone else did, right? Everyone kind of copied them with that color pattern. And that's a color pattern I throw a lot when it's cloudy and dreary and not as much wind, et cetera. And it catches fish in any color condition, any water color condition really, and mm -hmm. any light condition. So I guess it's Gosh, no surprise that. Awesome. Yeah, that a Vision 110 won another classic to tried and true jerkbait. So that part is really kick ass for like to say, but for Justin Hamner to win, I think that was pretty exciting as well. Talk about a jump start to that career. And he's no kidding, crushing yeah. it. And it's proof of how well momentum can carry you in the sport of bass fishing. I don't know Justin Hamner, but like uh, I and I'll be honest, like a lot of what I do know about Justin Hamner is through through this show and, and your guys' conversations right on, on this show, this platform. Um, I just I don't know. He's got like just a, a cool mental side like he's he's uh, just rolling with the punches. And I don't know. I, I think the calmness and the yeah, just the overall calmness and his mental attitude like. That, that that's the perfect approach to fishing really 
I think. Yeah. Just relax. And he knew that he was going to go get him. And I'm waiting yes. for Justin here to give me the thumbs up if he's ready to come on. I shot him a text message, but he was ignoring me. So, mm-hmm. All right, perfect. We'll get Justin's thoughts here. Hey, Justin, how's it going? Can't hear you. My Might man. have to unplug. Oh, there you are. Welcome. Hey, congrats on the finish at the KBF National. Was that the national championship for the KBF? It so was well, down on Gunnersville. Fifth? Awesome. Congrats, Good, yeah. man. I was I the way the way my tournament season's gone so far, I was I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, I would be as well. So it's a good turn of events, and hopefully you, like we are just talking about momentum, hopefully you can carry the momentum through the next few events. But what were your thoughts on Grand? You know, I, I didn't get to, to see as much of it as I, I wanted to. Uh, I was down there competing for the, the Bassmaster Kayak Series Championship on 10-Killer, uh, and I, I wish 10-Killer set up a little more like Grand. Uh, so I, I listened to a lot of it while I was driving to and from. Uh, yeah, how was, far was, it was how far was ten killer from Tulsa? I want to say it was an hour and a half or so, uh, hour and a half south. So it was you know not exactly close, but not terrible. Uh, we only you know we were we fished before the classic, so we our our last day of competition was the day before the classic started, and then their their first. First day way in was when they had the kayak award ceremony, and as you know, as, as you know, Drew Drew won that. Then uh, yeah, it's always a cool award award ceremony. I, I got a chance to do that in twenty twenty two to walk across the stage, and you know, even though it was, you know, the, the arena wasn't completely full yet, but just walking on that stage, knowing that, that this is something that I've I've watched on. You know, on live for for years, I've watched those way, and it's it was cool to be on stage like that. Um, so yeah, the the classic itself, um, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I didn't watch as much of it as I as I was was hoping, but I did enjoy listening in. Um, it was it was cool to see Hamner, especially the how emotional he got afterwards. The the stories that he told. I think a lot of us can relate to that, you know, like sleeping in your car, you know, cutting grass, doing whatever you got to do to try to fish. Um, and I don't think it could have happened to a better guy. Absolutely. Yeah, so sure. and talking about like good guys in the fishing industry and on the elite series, our guest is down in the queue. So we're going to get him on here in a second, but real fast, I think we should run through our fantasy fishing points from grand lake before we get back into the harris chain talks and our guest did fish in the classic so i want to hear his little side of it as well as it was his first classic that he was in so um brennan do you want to start us off with your points and kind of run through your team real quick yeah we're starting fantasy right yes sir all right cool so yeah getting back to my team i had jason christie Milliken, Jay Shakirat, Cody Huff, and Tyler Williams for 1,212 points. Um, 1,212, not bad. Yep, yep. So we didn't have Hamner on this one. We had him on Drain the Lake. Wish I had him on this team, but uh, overall I had, a, I had a third, fourth, and a 17th, which ended up carrying me to 12-12. So. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. Largen, how about you? My team, I had uh, Patrick Walters in Group A. I had Stetson Blaylock. I had Koya Fujita, Taco Ito, and Kyle Patrick, ironically. Oh, so nice. I was total of twelve oh three, a little bit, uh, a little bit behind there. But twelve oh three. It was so long, so long. Uh, I guess I, I made those picks and then I missed the show. It's like I don't even remember who I picked for, <laughs> for that. It was, <laughs> Oh well, yeah, it's been a couple it weeks. It feels like a fun. lifetime ago. Yeah, now we have what back to back events here in Florida, like two weeks yeah. in a row. So it's kind of funny this year. It seems like all the events like stack on top of each other and then we get a long break and then stack. So it's it's tough to stay in it. So I don't have Bailey's um well, I guess I could pull them up and we'll go through that here in a second. But I had 1281 and then I had Polinick, uh Kamara. Fujita, Hamner, and Father Gill. And I probably should have taken Kyle because he was in Group E, wasn't he? So, like, I went back and forth on it and 
decided not to, but 1281 for me. And let's see how everyone else rounded out here real fast. So it looked like Deacon had 1235 and Bailey took the win with 1317. And then Boomer had 1217. So, and right now for the fantasy fishing roundout points, it looks like Deacon is in first, Bailey's in second, Justin, you're sitting nice at third, um, about 200 points out. I'm sitting in fourth, Boomer's in fifth, and then Brennan, you've got a pretty big gap there, bud, to catch up on. You're you're down by about all sorts of time, man. <laughs> and then real fast, if you want, we can uh, just run through your drain the lake points in who you had there. You don't really have to run through it all that fast. Justin, do you have yours pulled up or Brennan? Yeah, my drain the lake total points was 2,578. It's pretty good. I think so where you're, uh, where you're lacking in fantasy, right? Like you're doing pretty right. well. I made up for that. Drain the lake. <laughs> for sure. And how'd you, How'd you do, uh, Justin? Drain the lake. Uh, I'm trying to pull it up. I know I looked at it. I'm pretty sure I'm bringing up the rear in that. Like I'm at under sixty percent, so I uh, I'm oh, not boy. doing great in drain the lake uh, overall. I I don't know what it is. I believe it or not, I spent more time with drain the lake. I sat down and mapped out the entire season. I spent probably two hours sitting there going through every event, like picking my favorites for each event. And uh, and yeah, I've I've done by far worse in that than, than the one just sort of glancing and oh yep that guy that guy that guy the the standard fantasy. Yeah, well, that's the lake stuff you think because, too much. Yeah, yep. You can't think. It. You just gotta pick. Like I usually pick my drain the lake literally while we're on it, about to go through, or like ten seconds before we get on. So I had twenty five ten for my drain the lake. And the overall rounded out standings right now is I'm sitting in first. Bailey is in second. Brennan's in third with 51.95. Um, Deacon in fourth. Boomer in fifth. And Justin, you're rounding out the caboose here with uh, yep. you're down by a thousand, bud. So what is your plan here to flip it around and rise to the top? I'm I'm hoping that I have a, a lot of the the scopers. I picked for those smallmouth events. So I've, yeah. I'm hoping that it sort of like catches up to me <laughs> at the end, like that, that those last couple of tournaments, um, you know, it's just the, the guy I've, I, I don't know, like we can't actually make the picks, but I've got them jotted down. Like, like I've got Shakurik, Felix, Kamura, Fujita, the Johnsons, uh, Gussie and Cooper Gallant for the last, that's my St. Lawrence team. So I'm Love hoping it. that I at least have one good tournament. I got all those guys too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that, and that's where you're going to run into issues because we're all probably going to pick the same people for those events, right? So yeah, it's like I, yeah. gonna... that's what I don't know. Is like if, if I was hoping that other people would just sort of pick week to week and not be thinking right. like sort of long term. I feel like, like Train the Lake think... is strategic, but. You have to and some, sometimes it burns you because you you think too forward and you don't think enough in the moment. You don't like use good anglers like when you know their skill set they could deploy right there at that time. But yeah, it's fun. That's what makes it fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just making sure our guest here is ready to come on so we can talk a little bit Harris Chain, and I also want to hear what how he did at Grand. And it looks like we're interrupting his dinner, so we're gonna have to ask him what he's eating. So. Without further ado, our special guest from the Elite Series tonight is Kyle Patrick. So, what's up, man? How you doing? Boy, oh, start to eat, bud. <laughs> Me and Wesley Gore are chowing yes. down on some Mexican food. It's yeah. bad ass. Good, good <laughs> thing the Derby doesn't start tomorrow, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it would be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a problem. Oh, so we got um, special guest Wesley with you. How are you boys doing? Oh, you know, we're uh, Wesley's texting. Sorry, we're doing good. I mean, man, this lake is a grind, though. I gotta tell you, like, hardest I've. I mean, I it's always a grind for me, right? Because I'm not that great in Florida for the most part. Like, I haven't quite figured out 
how to fish for Florida fish are weird. They're just weird. Um, but I mean, I'm thinking like nine and a half pounds gets a check. And I've talked to some people like it's, it is that bad right now. I mean, the Harris chain had a huge fish kill, um, huge fish oh, kill wow. like two months ago. Yeah. Big, big fish kill. So I think people are going to need to make super long runs and, you know, find really specific areas and kind of milk, you know, if you catch 13 or 14 pounds, it's almost, you almost have to lean off them. You're like, you know, make sure that you sustain, like it's, I will say this, it will be the worst tournament weights all year hands down no questions asked hmm. wow sorry for that spiel I, I'm just, I'm, I just got off the water dude i just got off the water like i'm i'm it was a grind <laughs> i was there for the kayak series in it was either very end of january or beginning of february i don't remember exactly yeah but it, it fished really well guys put up you know, really giants i i that must have been before a fish kill um because it, it was good to us. When was it? Kayakers killed them all. That's what happened. That, <laughs> yeah. when, uh, when was that? It, I want to say it was tail into January, but it could have been first week of February. Yeah. So the fish kill was, I don't know when it was, but it was around that time. Either, you know, it was somewhere around that time. Do they know what know caused what? the fish kill? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, I, I wouldn't put money. Like if you drop me in Lake Harris or like you have to fish the lake, you can't fish canals, you can't fish anything off of Harris. I wouldn't bet money that I'd catch a, a bass. Like, Whoa. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, someone will figure it out, of course. Um, but I do think the weights will be really low. Really have hmm. have you got any sort of good vibes with that place from because wasn't that that was the last turn of the season that was where you like punched your ticket for the oh elite series God. dude like, yeah I've, I've had you know that's what's crazy is like i had to grind then harder than i've ever grinded right but it's funny you say that first day i was here okay i'm going down this stretch and i find a shad spawn deal where i catch a five pounder I was like, dang, it's not as bad as people are talking about. Catch a two pounder and I sling my chatterbait out down this grass stretch and I'm reeling and I'm reeling and all of a sudden I just hear like thunk and I'm like, I'm like, did I hit something? And I look back, dude, there's a four and three quarter pounder in my boat. It jumped onto the front deck, four and three quarter, like a big one <laughs> on the front deck. And I was just like, is this a, is this a sign? Like, am I going to win this tournament or something? Like what's going on here? Uh, and then I, I, I quickly realized that I'm not going to win, but it, it was cool. It was a cool, uh, a cool, you know, thing to experience. Like it really scared me. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, yeah. Like the bass literally jumped in your ki or in kayak in your, in your bass boat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It zero hook. Like my, my chatterbait was a hundred yards in front of the boat. It just jumped in. See, I want to know if that counts. Like, does that fish? I mean, does that count as a catch? <laughs> I was I, I in your boat. The amount, you of, the amount it, of people that asked it. me that, the amount of people that asked me that, and I said, well, maybe if it jumped in the boat and it kind of got in the gunnel and it kind of calmed down and it, its mouth was open, and you pitch the jig in its mouth and set the hook, <laughs> is that sight fishing in the mouth? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So, but real fast, Clint Bartlett wants to know before we kind of dive a little bit more into Harris here, he wants to know what your go to Mexican meal is. What are you guys eating on that fiesta of a table? Oh, yeah. Fajita is a really, you know, is a, is a solid, like, guarantee. Like, if you're kind of like, I don't know if this Mexican food is going to be good or not, like, I get fajita because it's, you know, everything's kind of separate. You can build your own deal. That That's my, that's my go to for sure. What we got for cervezas? Um, I drink Coca Cola. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Fair. I would actually, be drinking a Corona if I was there with you guys. Actually, but. Coca Cola. Same. Coca Cola McUltra. You know what I mean? Okay, fair, fair. So yeah, domestic Coca Cola. Guy, all right. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, when you're in a Mexican place, so you should at least be drinking like a Tecate. Right. right. Or yeah, I'm a, I'm yeah, a, I'm a margarita. Go. I am a, I am a margarita fan. But, um, get you some know, agave tequila going down, but then oh, you're gonna yeah. have issues waking up in the morning. So that's that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but. I think if are we on the fantasy fishing topic right now? Is that what we're like? Well, we got sidetracked by Mexican food, but yes. So yeah, like <laughs> maybe like give us some insight on like, is it going to be, do you think it's going to be a shallow thing? Is it going to be a junk fishing thing deep? Like it may be a predominant bait or two. You think it could win the event? Yeah. I think Pete Robbins just put out an article on Bassmaster that you guys should go read. And it's spot on. Like, it, it couldn't be more spot on. He has his picks, his backup picks, why. And I think, I mean, he he gets it right a lot of the time. Like, if you go back and look at Pete Robbins' fantasy picks, I bet you he would be in, like, the 98th percentile almost every tournament. Um, <laughs> he basically, like, this is a weird time of year, a really weird, like, transition also, the added fish kill. I mean, there was a two-day, just to put it into perspective, on Griffin, there was a two-day local tournament. It took 10 and a half pounds a day. And that was 60 boats, okay? So, like, that being said, I mean, it's not going to take that bad. Like, we're going to catch them better than that. But, you know, um, I think you're going to need a junk fish. You're going to need to really pick apart areas that you think have them. I think the guys, like, like a Greg Hackney... Um, you know, Gerald Swindle is always in the mix when you're talking about junk fishing. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to shake things up. This will shake up the points, this tournament, because, you know, it's not like, you know, go out, graph, excuse me, graph, find a school, you know, throw a plug out there and catch them on shell bars or anything like that. And it's certainly not, I'll, there's not an abundance of grass in the lake right now. Like, that's not a thing. They they nuked this thing. This thing is nuked. <clears throat> like, wow. you'll see, like, a tiny, you know, two-foot wide, like, square or circle of grass. Like, every, I mean, it's almost impossible to find on, on Harris itself. But, you know, if you get into Beauclair and, and you know, Griffin's got some grass, obviously, Um it's 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 hard but i think someone who can junk fish you know maybe fish a canal or two maybe do this maybe do that you know like jump around and have like a strategic way of of running to their primary spot like they run to the primary spot and then they kind of junk fish their way back to the ramp i think that's going to fare well um for a lot of guys if they can kind of not get stuck on one deal you know and it's okay that's, yeah it's gonna be a so you're so, you're making it sound like it's gonna be it might be a fun one to watch just because of you don't know yes. the adversity that's gonna be so there's gonna be a ton of different patterns going down so okay, that's okay. exciting at least for the viewers to hear but hopefully yeah. you guys are able to catch some good fish and hopefully it's not as bad as you're making it sound out to be so we're gonna hope for the yeah I'm a little scared <laughs> yeah oh, I'm, I'm terrified now for my picks I'm yeah. like wow I'm oh, yeah. I'm in trouble. Yeah, so you've convinced me to change my uh, f my four day weight total that I had. So because I didn't even hear there was a fish kill, I've been so out. Oh of yeah, the yeah. Oh, whatever your weight is, this is this was this would be my weight prediction. Truly, if you got four days, Wesley, what's your weight prediction? Sixty nine. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I think it's nice. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not pick that though? Honestly. <laughs> Good, hey, good pick, no, 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 no. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, the, the true weight prediction, whatever 16 and three quarter pounds a day is, call it 17. 17 pounds a day, uh, 40, 68. I don't even know what that is. No. Is it? About 69. 68. It's 68? 68. Wow. 68 to no. 70, right. yeah. 69. Wow. <laughs> Dude, you know, it's gonna, you know now it's going to be 69 on the dot. That's what's gonna win. Could you tournament. imagine? <laughs> oh no, I could totally imagine. Wow. Oh man. As Justin and Brennan are changing their weight totals as we're speaking. <laughs> yep. I'll tell you what, I tell you what, it will not, it will not be over 80. It will not be over 80. Wow. I guarantee I, I can almost guarantee you it won't be over 80. 
and unless, it's over unless, 80 on game day. <laughs> yeah, right. Unless somehow this 35 to 45 mile an hour winds we're supposed to have on Thursday, if they cancel and somehow something changes drastically, I, I don't even know how it would, um, then there's no way it goes over 80. Here's a question. Maybe this is like hard to even think about due to what sounds like the absence of bass overall. But like, what do you think is available for a, a bed fishing angler right now over, over the course of your tournament? What do you think is available? How much? Not to survive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could survive. Um, survive and win. Like, no, no, you, no, 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 you can't yeah. win. Okay. Someone, someone could go out and if they have committed their time to it day, yeah wesley said it right i think day one leader or high high will be bedfish because you know i've seen some big ones on bed like two or three big ones on bed but they're it's tail end so yeah. if you can if you can run into you know because i mean you know there's eight there's an eight nine pounders here and ten pounders obviously um, so I think day one leader could be bed fishing. It will die. That bite will be gone. Um, you won't be able to do it even two days in a row. I don't think. What I've does found, an eclipse I do found, to a bed fish? I found three. I found three <laughs> fish on beds. Okay. You know, so, but that is a good question because it, it, like, it, it will play. I'll just say that it'll play. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see Drew Cook, Drew Benton mm -hmm. kind of mix that up. Um, you know, all kinds of – like I said, it's going to be a junk fish tournament. There will be guys that fish beds, you know, starting at noon that, you know, threw a chatterbait down a uh, Kissimmee grass and fish stocks and fish offshore grass. Like, it, they will do it all. Yeah, it sounds fun at least as long as the yeah. fish bite. Right. <laughs> here's, right. here's a – a kind of spin off of of Brennan's point. How how far does that one big bite go? I mean, it, it always goes far in Florida. It seems like, but uh, if if it's going to be a grinder, like a ten pounder is is. Oh my god! I mean that that's Dude, an entire if catch, day. <laughs> if you catch a ten pounder and back it up with five keepers, you almost let's call them two pounders. You know, if you catch eighteen on day one you will be able to catch three and a half pounds and cut a check on the, like three and a half pounds on day two and cut a check. It'll take, it'll take 10 and three quarter pounds a day to get paid. You heard Imagine. it here first. Now I could be vastly wrong, but just, just wait. Like if the weights are going to be bad. He says this and now everyone's going to show up with 20 pound bags, right? Watch. <laughs> I yeah, know it's not gonna happen, I'm but gonna be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> century belt, century belt, century belt. <laughs> April Fool. Them off. Yeah, we're a little late for that. <laughs> I love it. So, well, Kyle, before we let you go here, I want to say congrats on making and fishing your first Bassmaster Classic. You had a great event there. Oh, and he's frozen. Somebody should really screenshot that photo of him that's pretty he's, good he's but... speechless andy he was so <laughs> he's so glad to hear what you just said yeah. so but um well we'll let kyle go here enjoy his mexican food we we're going to talk a little bit and congratulate him on his grand lake um bassmaster classic birth but hopefully he makes next year at ray roberts so we're going to let him go here so nobody can take his face and make good photos of it but good luck kyle and we'll be watching and rooting on you this weekend and we'll chat soon so all right well kyle is out of here and i want to remove him from the studio okay he's gone so before we start really diving into the event first he talked about like 40 mile an hour winds on thursday so i pulled up the weather report for Eustis, Florida, and I don't see 40 mile an hour winds anywhere, except for maybe Thursday afternoon. So, I mean, it's speaking on being from what it sounds like a horrible event, but I'm sure now you're going to have a couple anglers that come right to mind that are probably going to crack them day one and two, and then pray they have enough backup fish to last day three and four. So, 
<laughs> makes yeah, me want to like rethink my picks. <laughs> me too. Like after after hearing Kyle, it reminds me of of like some of these old school throwback tournaments, mm-hmm. you know, 15, 20 years ago where you know the the lake was on a, a downward trend, I guess, and the the weights were were very low, different than it's been the last few visits. It yeah. uh like I remember I think it was Iconelli. If he didn't win, he was he was near the top in one of these these little backwater canals, catching you know not not catching the the sort of giants that we've seen the last few years. Uh, it'd be <laughs> who who would have thought Harris Chain would would be like uh, oh what's the river? Um, my my brain is like an Arkansas River type event or like, yeah, like Arkansas River, 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 river or, or Sabine Cooper Sabine river, river. Sabine, Sabine yeah Winya yeah. Bay. Like <laughs> it goes on and on. They they thought that they were getting away from it this year, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and crazy. it's and it's happening at happening at a place that like you know if this would we would have been here like a month or two ago, it could have been Century Belts, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that I mean, nuts to think about? High school kids are sick. putting up thirty pound bags down there. Yeah, almost makes That's, you sick as a bass angler. Yeah. And here's the thing. Somebody is going to catch them no matter what. So it's like it might take 60 pounds. It could also take 80 because all it takes is to find that one or two magic offshore shell beds. And they're loaded with giants, right? So who knows what's going to happen? I mean, like with all the chain of lakes, too, it's so hard to cover and break down and graph in three days of practice, right? Like every little pot spot and maybe some of the local guys like this might be a heads up for a guy like scott market martin who may have went up and pre-fished and graphed some of these lakes or has had time there this time of year over a lot of the other anglers so there might be even a home field advantage for some of the anglers there so and, and you it's heard, gonna be yeah for sure and, and you also heard kyle say too like the there, there's a very it sounds like a very real amount of like high quality fish to catch off beds right now um and i think i heard wesley speak up in the background too and said like day one leader probably will be winning bed fishing right or leading bed fishing so that's kind of wild um and it might offer a very volatile leaderboard or at least uh you know you're gonna get to see some some cool shallow fishing at least part of the time so yeah it's too bad you couldn't pick like your picks on a day-to-day basis, right? Like every day kind of pick a new pick because I think that's what's going to happen in this event is you're going to see a lot of ups and downs, guys. Your typical Florida fishery, right? Like one day somebody might have 23, 24 pounds. The next day they could catch eight pounds for five. And then the third day they catch 18. And then the final day, oh, look, more new bed fish that showed up randomly and they catch Mm -hmm. 25 again. So that's the cool mystique about Florida fishing is you just never really know what's going to go on unless it's full blown spawn. And then the guys who find the big females end up doing really well. And if you don't find the females, you get left way in the dust. So should we get moving on to making our picks here? We shall. If we have to. (laughs) If we have to. All right. So I don't have Sheikin's picks or boomers, but also I just, um, I messaged one of my buddies that lives in Florida and I go, how is Harris fishing right now? And he goes, 16 pounds is good with all uppercase letters. And he said, there was a local derby this weekend, not the best fisherman, but only 16 pounds won. So. Yeah. So Kyle wasn't probably too far off. You know, no. Like, that fish kill thing, like that's a scary story. I hope, uh, I hope, like the world knows ultimately the whole. I story hope they talk about it on stage. Point. Yeah, I mean, if it had that dramatic of an impact on that fishery, that seems like something that the world should talk about or know about, right? Yeah, and I had heard that they were nuking, kind of like I was saying, a popka, uh, where it had kind of been left alone. And, yeah. and at least from what I understand, it had been a wasteland for a number of years. And then here recently, it got really good. A lot of guys, you know, over the last last few times Stephen Bass has been there, guys are locking through to specifically to fish a popka, you know, just loaded with grass. And if if they 
if they killed all that grass, I mean, it it, it, it kind of makes me wonder why. Yeah, and, and then turn into a big mud bowl, like chain of mud. And lakes. that's what I thought. I was like, maybe Opaka is going to be like the wild card where guys go down there and catch them in like that kiss me grass and they do really well. But now you might see guys fishing like Lake Dora offshore in the because I think Dora is like the cleaner lake. I think they're going to be in one of those clean lakes fishing offshore shell beds and praying. Beau Claire is really clear, too. Yeah. Beau Claire. Yeah. Beau Claire is another one. That's a good spawn lake, though, usually, isn't it, Beau Claire? Because of how clear it is. It is. Um, the last two years that I've been down there, there's been a bunch of eelgrass. Um, it, it's, you know, like a lot of those, like it's kind of bowl shaped, but it's got a ton of eelgrass and just the, it's a great, great spawning habitat. But big yeah. big fish get caught everywhere, but they they also get caught out of that lake. So it's going to be interesting. You might see a lot of people like on top of each other just cannibalizing fish as well. So it might be a type of tournament where you see guides get away from the beaten path and find something like sneaky and catch them really well. So it's um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see it, but I'm not excited at the same time. So I think we should get into our picks real fast. And I got Bailey's pulled up here. So we'll go group. We're going group E to A, correct? Is the way we've been doing it this year? Yes, sir. So works for me. Uh, I'll, I'll start with Bailey's pick. He took Caleb Kufal in group mm -hmm. E. And then uh, Brennan, if you want to start us, and we'll kind of come back through here. Yeah, I also took Caleb Kufal. Um, Caleb's a grass wizard, so um, I think he kind of had his debut, absolutely had his debut at Gunnersville, uh, you know, fishing grass post-spawn and had the second largest margin of victory with like over 17 pounds um, yeah. over second place. So, yeah, the, the guy can fish grass. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully there's still plenty of grass. Sounds like there's still ridiculous amounts, right? Um, but yeah. he's a... Uh, He's a really good grass fisherman, all in all. Um, ice in his veins, slow, pretty good in Florida. You know, maybe pitching a jig up shallow, something old school. So I picked Caleb Kufal. I think it's a good pick. How about you, Justin? I went with uh, Joey Sapuentes. And my my logic, I think, that I went through and made these picks uh, shortly after Fork. And uh, I, I went with a lot of kind of the, the old school, traditional – like your your Greg Hackney, Gerald Swindle types, and uh, you know they they did not have a great tournament compared to the Scopers. And after that tournament, I vowed I am going all Scopers the rest of the year. And you know that uh, that was before I had the knowledge that I have that that Kyle shared now. with us about the fish kill and all that. So I'm not sure. So you flopped. I, I, it went right back. I still <laughs> I still like the pick. It uh, like I didn't change it, um, but I mean all these guys are versatile they'll find a way to catch him uh and joey's got a win down there um surprised me a little bit that he's in groupie but he's yeah I mean, he's, he's, he's had a rough start to the year his win was on seminal think, um but it's florida so mm -hmm. yeah. and he was catching him deep so i mean that's a good pick i think so i took brian smith i probably took boomer's pick here um i know there was an mpfl event there in the fall that Bryant did really, really well in. So that's why I went there. And I got to gain some more ground here in fantasy. So he's due for another good mm -hmm. tournament. He had a pretty decent classic, I believe. So he's got some momentum behind him now. So, yep, we're going to take Bryant Smith out of Group E. All right, ready for D. And it, like I said, I don't have Adam Deacon's picks or Jake Boomer. So just the four of us today. So, Group D, Bailey is taking Scott Martin, which I think I have a funny feeling we're all probably on that train or one or two other guys. So, Brennan. Yeah, I, I took Scotty Mart, too. Um, I mean, I, do you really have to really say anything? It's Scott Martin. It's Florida. He he, he backs himself up um, pretty well. So, um, hard to get away from him. Nothing else to say. <laughs> Justin? Yeah, I... I did the same. I went with with Scott. It was a little bit, you know, that John Cox. I think is another guy that would have, would have made a lot of sense. Um, you know, he was. I was looking at the percentages. It looks like thirty five percent 
owned Cox and 25% Martin. That was part of my thinking is that maybe that's a way for me to make a little bit of ground back. Um, I think either one of those is a great choice. And then I also noticed uh, uh, Buddy Gross in that group at only 5% with a win down there the last time the elites were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't I don't know if that offshore bite is is there this time, but but I Strong thought that would have been bait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's one Carolina of those guys rig. that will figure it out. Chatterbait yeah. a little bit. Yeah. I thought that'd be another sneaky one. I was, I felt like Scott Martin though. I mean, it's, you know, even if he doesn't win, I, I feel like he's going to have a good tournament. Um, you know, with all that, that local knowledge, it, he's, he's going to have a good showing. Yeah, and he's another guy too, right? Like he's safe. So you don't have to be, he's not worried about getting kicked out of the elite series. He's already in the classic next year. So all year he's probably just going to swing for it and try to win another blue trophy because he's already in the classic for next year at Ray Roberts. So he's a good pick, I think, to go there. I'm not going to take the Scott Martin train. I'm actually going to go John Cox. If they're spawners, he's probably going to catch them day one and two. And then he's just going to wacky rig his way around the event the rest of the time. And he'll probably come <laughs> in with, with a limit each day of day three and four if he makes it that far. So I think he's a lock for at least a good finish in the top 35. So my yeah, pick is going to be John Cox. And I, I try not to take like the high percentage guys, but his track record on like Harris is unreal. You just can't bet against him. And he's having kind of a rough start to his season so he's due for a really good event so all right group c who do you guys got oh i should probably do bailey's first and stay on track right sure. i'm all over the place here so bailey took brian schmidt which is a really great oh. pick for florida bailey's copying me <laughs> <laughs> oh boy well now we know justin's so brennan <laughs> Um, I went John Soak up on this one, and I'll, I'll be honest, I feel even better about this pick now knowing that it's going to be a grind. Um, I, I went into this thinking like this was going to be a slugfest likely, um, and I still wanted John Soak up. Knowing that it's a grind now, I like him even better. You know, you think like it's a guy that sat out a classic, you know, in his own state. Like, and I, I mean, no disrespect by that. Like, I have a ton of respect for this guy, but like, I got to believe he's got a little fire under his you-know-what right now um, and wants to get his season back on track. He's got a seventh-place finish here last fall, another grinder tournament, right? So yeah. I like him here. Yeah, I think that's a good sneaky pick at 0.9%. That's that's very unlikely, unlike you, to take a low percentage guy over he, the He top. is very, very high margin if he pays off. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a great pick. So – um, I was torn between two guys. I was torn between Brian Schmidt and Drew Cook. Based off of Kyle Patrick's knowledge, I actually decided to change my pick before we got to this point. I'm going to take Drew Cook. The guy is unbelievable with spawners. And I'm sure once he saw one, he probably drove around. It was like, where can I find 10 more of these to get me through two days or 15 more of these fish to get me through two days. So I think Drew Cook's going to be a lock for at least the top 50 finish, especially when there's a spawning event. When they said it was basically done at Santee, I think was the year he won his blue trophy, right? Or the second year it was almost done. He caught him there still on beds all four days. So the guy is incredible spawn fisherman and he's good at kind of junking it up too and just kind of clawing his way through fish like events. So Drew Cook is going to be my pick there for group C. Yeah, and I, I I guess Kyle's made me a little uneasy because for me, yeah. and, and I th- I'm, I'm assuming Bailey's logic was the same as mine with, with Brian Schmidt. I mean, he's he's a legend on grass fisheries. He's, he's won more money than anybody in the Potomac. Uh, and then he's he's won multiple times on the Mississippi River. Just when he gets around grass, he's mm-hmm. really, really I think hard he's won, to beat. I think he's won in Florida too. Either on the FLW or like an open, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure he's won down there or had like top fives, like Could been be. right on and, the cusp. Yeah, and Champlain. The on, only part oh, that scares yeah. me a little bit now is that you know if there's no grass, it kind of takes away the. Uh, I, I'm sure he'll find some. Um, oh, he'll find grass. And, I'm not worried. Grass fishermen always find grass or a way yeah. to catch them out of what grass 
there is. So, yeah, going to be interesting. All right, Group B, Bailey took Pat Schlopper, which that's kind of a fun pick for me, I think. Guy just shows up when there's big fish. How about you, uh, Brennan? Who'd you take? Yeah, well, one thing just to note on Pat Schlopper, I mean, he, that's a that's a Wisconsin, you know, like Chippewa flowage style angler, like another phenomenal grass fisherman that jives really well with that style fishery, right? Like Florida in general. So yeah. um, just think about like the Minnesota and Wisconsin guys that go down to Florida and have success, like mm-hmm. quite a few of them, you know, and, and you're starting to see more of them. But anyways, I really like that pick. Um, I picked Drew Benton, um, you know, Drew Cooks. Oh, right player. back on track, huh? Yeah, the, yeah. The top right, percentage right. Owned. Yeah, 29.1 <laughs> had to take him. Um, but no, honestly, like Drew Cook's counterpart, all the parts that all the points that you made about Drew Cook and, and how he's going to excel. Same deal here. It's the same, same thing. So Drew Benton. Between the two of them, they probably know where 50 fish are on beds and they can kind of work together because they room together. So, you know, remember the same T event a few years ago when Drew Cook won and it was like the Drew show, the Drews. Yeah, that was a cool event. Right. Right. Could happen here. And they're fishing pretty close to each other the entire time, too, weren't they? Right. Yep. (laughs) Not too far. Not too far. And, And not and neither one of them didn't bed fish the entire time. That's all they did. It, it, like when I think Florida, like I feel like when they used to kick off the season in Florida, the first one who always put a fish on the board was Drew Benton. And it was always between like a five and nine pounder on a bed on day one. Like the first fish coming across on live would always be a giant. And it was always Drew Benton for some reason. It's, I think it was the same spot every time they went to the St. John's. The right. guy just understands bed fishing. Justin, how about you? I went with uh, a lower percentage pick on this one. Um, I like Luke Palmer. And I, I think yeah. when I made the pick initially, I was thinking, you know, somebody who's uh, who's good with scope. But I, I think he's he's kind of – he's won on uh, – what was Santee last year, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, he's – and then he turned around and he's, he's figured out the smallmouth too. Uh, I think he's really versatile. He's been really hot the last couple seasons. He's a friend of the show, and and they've been hot lately. So i i like yeah. uh, I like Luke Palmer, especially at at four percent. Um, Incredibly know, consistent. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I you know I'm I'm not where I want to be in the standings. So trying to trying to gain a little ground with those those uh, lower percentage picks. I like that one. That's a good one. Time to swing. So. I went back and forth between two guys. I was like, do I go with the community hole fisherman and just kind of grind his way through fisheries and John Garrett, his rookie season on the elite series, or do I want to take somebody that will probably utilize the very end of the spawn if it's happening still. And I went with the spawn guy and drew Benton before even like knowing what was going on with the lake, just cause it's Florida. If there's five fish on beds for day one, he's probably going to catch those five fish on bed and have 20 to 24 pounds and ride the high the rest of the tournament and just kind of scrap his way through bites. So Drew Benton is going to be a lock for me there in group B. Yeah, right, he move knows on to some of those canals. Definitely, oh. uh, he's, he's, he's got some spots. The only thing that, you know, not, not to question your pick, I, I have a feeling you're, you're going to be right on that, but I wonder if if the main lakes are fishing that tough. I wonder if if instead of seeing people? kind of what we've seen in the past, like where it's a carousel around these grass flats, if we see just a, a, a boat, a you know, triage of boats, <laughs> <laughs> doing doing laps around these little canals, it could it, be. But uh, like that being said, there's still going to be main lake spawners too. So, hmm. and I'm sure on that. It's just where are they? And yeah, like in the counterpart that is, there's so much kiss me grass. I'm sure you can go and flip up a limit every day, fishing mm-hmm. kiss me grass with whatever soft plastic or jig choice that you want to do. You might see a prop bait play too, and just covering a lot of water with that post spawn bite. 
So that could be some mm-hmm. fun, epic topwater fishing. And both Drew Benton and Cook, I believe, are really good. Speci- specifically, Benton is really good with that prop bait, but I think Cook is really good with it as well. Scott Martin as well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All those Florida guys know how to throw that dang thing. <laughs> yeah, see some old school lures come out this weekend. It's gonna be fun. The Bagley one and then the Smithwick one will probably be the top two prop baits, right, Brennan? The Devil's Horse. That's right. The Devil's Horse. Oh yeah. All right. Group A. Bailey went with Jay Shakirat, so he's thrown in a forward-facing offshore guy. Brennan, how about you? Another Wisconsin guy. See. Telling you, there's something. It translates to it. well. It does. It really does. Um, I have absolutely no reason to move off of Ben Milliken at this point. So he's got a second place finish during an absolute grinder event last year, the last fall. Sorry, um, fishing insanely well, obviously, uh, for the season. So I'm not moving away from Ben. I don't blame you, Justin. I kept it pretty simple. I went with one of the the hottest anglers in the sport. Um, you know, making a run at anger of the year seemingly every year, but over the last five years, uh, I went Patrick Walters. He's he can catch him if there's an offshore bite scoping. Consistent. Um, exactly. He's you know, he'll figure out a way seemingly everywhere they go, he's catching those fish. So uh, I felt I like, like that was a, a pretty safe pick for me. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm swinging on my group A pick just slightly, I think, even though Ooh. he, I believe he won. A BPT event on Harris Chain. I'm going to pick Jordan Lee for the second time this year out of Group A. The guy jives well with big Florida strain fish, and he's good on Harris Chain. So I think that's somebody I can count on to at least get me a top 35. And he can do just about everything and catch them. He might be the guy you ultimately see catch one on a bed, run out to a shell bar, catch one, fish a dock or a canal, run. So Jordan Lee, I. He I came like back it. to Elite on a vengeance. So and it's a little oh, bit yeah, different than everyone else. He's making a splash, reminding people. Yep. Reminding people, uh, you know, the guys that maybe didn't follow MLF. Like, because I don't know personally, it's it's hard harder for me to follow MLF than it is bass. And some of those yeah. guys that that left, it's man, a, a bunch of them when they come back, it you they hear that game a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come back angry. So yeah, it's um, it's gonna be exciting. So should we do drain the lake first before we go into total weight, or do we want to talk about total weight now for the event? It's up to you, boss. All right, let's do it at the end of drain the lake. So let's get it pulled up here. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen real fast because I have to remove and write down my picks for drain the lake and for those if you're new here at this point just know we're missing uh deacon and boober tonight along with bailey because bailey is having a lot of computer issues so that is why you have to deal with me running the show today but appreciate everyone who is hanging on to this good job Andy. i'm not doing good job a terrible fine job job here so give me one (laughs) second here for my drain the lake so i don't yeah i'm trying to go in and change one of my picks. Ooh. Yeah, you you guys uh you guys were talking about Caleb Kufal. I'm gonna add him to my list. I like it. One other thing to note on the Caleb Kufal uh deal, I don't think we talked about it, but like when he won Gunnersville by 17 pounds, that was like the same deal. Like anglers were complaining, this is gonna be the worst Gunnersville tournament you've ever seen, right? Caleb Kufal yeah. wins by 17 pounds, four ounces. Like, that's nuts. Right? So, kind of walking into maybe another one of those. Yeah. You know, sometimes guys just Caleb show up. Here. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I think I already used him. That's like the problem. I know he's I, oh, good. I had him and scratched him. I started, you know, moving, you know, like I said, I was after that fork tournament when those those scopers were doing crazy things I'd never seen before. Breaking a fish off on a jerk bait, following the fish, catching the same fish, getting their bait back. And I was like, wild. all right, I'm I'm scopers the rest of the year. So I, I <laughs> like, made a bunch of changes to my initial picks. For that to happen, like that's just unreal and it's happened more than once this year i think too right like where a guy's chased down a fish and caught it with its jerk bait or whatever your 
cricket tickling minnows like stuck in its face. So it, it's yep. pretty it's pretty wild to see exactly like what happens with those forward facing fish and that they'll actually bite more than once if you know how to present a bait to them, which is unreal. Because you know the we've always been told, yeah, if you stick them once, they're probably gonna take three or four days before they even think about biting a lure again. It like yeah the the those, only time I've ever had something like ha that happen where you you catch a fish is smallmouth like river smallmouth that are just you know an hour later you know you you, yeah. you see the same fish you know swimming with its the jerk bait in its face <laughs> chasing you know other fish with a bait but I've I've never heard of that happening with largemouth until I saw it on the elite series yeah absolutely it's just it's just insane. And I mean, I think that's one of the cool parts about forward facing sonar and we're not going to dive into that rabbit hole tonight, but um, it is cool to show you fish behavior and that when they're hungry, they're going to eat again. So, all right, ready for the drain the lake roster. Let's do it. I, I don't have Bailey's picks at the moment, so uh, I just asked him for it. So Brennan, I'm going to have you uh, start it off here. All right, here we go. So I'm going Greg Hackney, Scott Martin, John Sokup, Corey Johnston, using a Canadian, not at a smallmouth Ooh, event. Burning them now, huh? Yeah, yeah. I've just learned like to spread them out, like use them to do different, you know, points yeah. here, points there, spread them out. Don't use them at the same time, right? Um, John Cox, Stetson Blaylock, Tyler Rivet, Caleb Kufel. That's a solid like roster. It. We'll see. How about you, Justin? All right. I got some of the same names, but I got some different ones too. I went with Scott Martin, John Cox, Tyler Williams, uh, Tyler Rivette, Brian Schmidt, Clifford Perch, Kobe Krieger, and Caleb Kufal. Those are all solid picks. So I got Cox, Martin, Bernie Schultz, Sofuentes, mm -hmm. John Garrett, Brandon Lester, who also has a win, I believe, on the Harris chain as an mm -hmm. open. Yeah, Greg yep. De Palma, who just kind of hangs around and every once in a while in these grass fisheries will show up catching them on a trap. Then Kyle Patrick rounding out my drain the lake team. So I like it. I think this is where the great debate's gonna start, right? Is talking about weights because I'm sure before we found out about the fish kill, we were all in the 80s. Because it's Florida and it usually takes like 20 pounds a day to win, 20 to, 20 to 22 pounds with a bad day rate on average. So I'm curious because, I mean, Bailey's, I'll tell you right now, he, I told him that there is a fish kill and he's sticking to his guns that I have. He may change it, but he has 89.12. Ooh, I like yeah. it. Sticking to his gun. And that's be before he found out. Well, he never responded to me when I told him there was a fish kill. So... Who knows? But Brennan, what is your thoughts on the total weight pounds and ounces for this? Derby? So I, I'll be honest. I was in the eighties. I think I was actually flirting with 90, probably going into this. And I deleted I think it I originally had like, 86. Yeah, no, for sure. I was like somewhere right in there. Um, and then I got a little gun shy uh, after Kyle came on and I backed it down to 72, six, but like, I still feel like, you know, somebody like a Milliken last year that showed us like, hey, I've got some random little brush pile spot all to myself. Like, why yeah. why couldn't somebody go in there and just mop up, you know, at least two days go, you know, get a mega bag out of there or something or one, two, three anchor fish that carry you throughout the tournament. Right. Um, so I don't know. I still think. 72 six might be light. I, I do, but. I'm also not down there, so I don't know the uh, the the weight of that, right? And it's crazy. All somebody needs to do is find a magic brush pile, and it's loaded with six to eight bounders, right? And they need 20 of them, and if they find three or four brush piles that are loaded, that, to be honest, you know, locals, like, and I'm not saying that weekend, let, that tournament last weekend we heard about was bad. But a lot of times in local fisheries, local anglers tend to stick more to their guns than explore. And it's probably the same mm -hmm. way for you, Brennan. But like a mm -hmm. lot of these guys that fish locally, you can't almost always 
trust their weights on exactly how the fishery is fishing because if something changes a lot of times they're later to the party to adjusting than guys coming in with an open mind to a new body of water for them that year right i mean honestly when the elites come to town the weights go up period plain and simple every time i honestly i can't name an instance like where that wasn't the case right um unless i don't know maybe something crazy happened but typically like you see local weights are 18 add a add a few pounds for the elites when they come to town usually right yeah so if it was 16 last world. weekend it's probably gonna be 19 to 20 average to win because somebody is going to figure out how to catch them but it's also florida so like it we mentioned in the beginning of the show roughly that one day somebody might catch 26 pounds on bed and the next day they might have nine. So it's where does that four day average fall? Is it in that 16 range or is it in 19 to 20 to get them to that 40, 80 pound mark? So mm-hmm. that's going to be the, the fun spot. Justin, what do you have? I went, uh, I was initially very high. I think I was 96 something uh, before, before we talked to Kyle. So I went significantly lower. Um, I went down to 80 pounds in an ounce. You know, Kyle said there's no way they'd be above 80. I've, I don't know. I, I feel Florida. like there's exactly. And there's so many times that, that we hear from the elites about how difficult practice was. And then they go out and smash them in the tournament. Um, not saying that's going to happen this time, but I feel like there's, there's always somebody that finds them. And then, you know, the possibility of, of giant fish down there. If, if somebody, well, I'll put it this way. If the same guy gets two giants, uh, you know, that can, can make a huge difference. You know, you, you get a couple of eight to 10 pound fish, the same guy looks into those, those giants. Um, I, I feel like that can, that can throw that number uh, a little, a little high. So I went 81. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's a good adjustment to come down from where you were, but you didn't, take the top off and go into the 60s which could have been a scary leap as well and been left far behind so i went too low i already know i went too low. I yeah too I'm, I'm kind of i'm kind of in the middle i'm very nervous about the weight but i mean in the grand scheme of things the weight only gets you bonus points if there's a tie right i believe yeah. it's what it is or if you fall directly on the weight so i have 78 three because i think and this was my thought process before when we were talking offline. It's like how many fish are on beds because that's the, the big wild card, right? Like these guys are the best in the world at finding those fish on bed that nobody even thinks that they're around still. They always seem to find something. So 78-3, you have one or two big days for the winter and then they're going to have a crap day because something will change in the weather or they just have to refigure it out. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to this event. I hope you guys are as well. It's going to be very, very interesting, I think. And it's going to be exciting to see how it goes down. So what are your final thoughts before we uh, round it out here? Yeah, Florida Florida is always fun. Uh, The way they catch them, you know, they, they can definitely catch them offshore, catch them deep. But I love that shallow bite. I love seeing guys throwing frogs, throwing those prop baits. Even a wacky rig, catching big fish on spinning rods. Uh, I feel like it's going to be plenty of uh, plenty of fun bites for the guys that you know that complain about the seeing the guys out offshore with the little minnows and stuff. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know everybody gets their fill on uh, on shallow bites. Yeah, I feel like when you ha- start having like grass bomb and kill offs and kiss me grass plays you might see some like epic frog bites go down in that post-spawn period. And and in practice, they might not even cast at this stuff because they're like, Ooh, I think I could roll in there and get a fish to bite something. So a lot of times these guys don't even fish that much. They're just rolling around, but like, Oh crap, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then by the end of the last practice day, they're like, Oh, this looks good. I think I'm, this is where I'm going to start. And all of a sudden they got 22 pounds in the boat and, 40 minutes and you're like oh i thought it was going to be nine pounds a day like <laughs> brendan what are your thoughts yeah just kind of picking back piggybacking off what you guys already said like just the you know likelihood that we're going to get to see some awesome real shallow fishing um 
not maybe as much forward facing sonar. Although I promise you, we're still going to see it play. Somebody in the top ten, if oh, not yeah. multiple, you're still going to see it. But like, Trey it, that, be that, that'll probably be. That. Yeah, yeah, and I think that'll be maybe the most interesting thing is like we we're going to like what in theory should be dominated by shallow dirt, shallow fishing. We'll, we'll see. Um, you know, the the yin and the yang. How much live scopes in this one? That's what I'm kind of interested to see more than anything. It's like how many speed worm catches will we see as opposed to drop shot catches? Right. So, or jerk bait, yeah. Glide bait, perhaps. Haven't talked about that. Yeah. It is Why Florida. Not? And trap yeah. chatterbait. It's I think it's all gonna be in play. I think on the first day of the tournament, whoever is on live, you're gonna see five different techniques go down, unless it's Drew Bent and Drew Cook. Then you'll they'll be on bed fishing. You'll have four different techniques going down. Mm. So <laughs> I'm curious who they so, pick for live. I think that could be yeah. interesting. I I mean like they, that should be like a prop bet we should have started. Who we thought like yeah. the five guys on live would be. Maybe that's something we can uh, integrate next year. But definitely Scott Martin, John Cox. Yep. You'll probably have Milliken. Drew. Yeah, Milliken or one of the young scopers offshore guys. Who won so the open there have... last year? Uh, was it Tyler Williams? I think. I think. Okay, if that's the case, I'd imagine he'd probably have one, right? Maybe. Tyler, or you're gonna have Trey McKinney on, or Hamner because he just won the classic. Ooh, mm. Hamner for sure. Yeah, we're getting Hamner. because Who's... because it because at Sandy Cooper the week or two after they won Santy, Jason Christie was literally back in the Cypress streets just banging around like I don't care. Like, yeah, he, he just bombed went bad. <laughs> yeah, he did. He bombed but at that bad. point, it's, he did not care. I don't no, think he, he cared at all. Classic hangover. <laughs> who's who's yeah. leading the AOY right now? Is uh, it is it McKinney? It's one of those young kids. Hold on. I, I thought McKinney and was it Milliken? I know there were a couple guys Milliken. that were close. Milliken's oh, top know. ten, I believe. Yeah, it goes McKinney, Second. Milliken, Walters, Hamner, Fujita, Gore, Gallant, Blaylock, Williams, and Jordan Lee. And Milliken and McKinney are tied for first. Yeah, and Patrick Walters is one point behind. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if if those three guys are those top three there are are, are featured also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be. It's going to be because Patty Walters is always good in Florida. It's going to be very interesting to see what goes down on that first day. And, and hopefully, Andy, still I think that's going to set the tune. Andy, what, you loves that. You had uh, Lester. You were the one that had Lester in your your drain the lake, right? Then I drain the lake. I like yeah. That I was I was thinking about that. That's another one, man. His track record down there is in Florida. It's like his worst Early finish though. is like in the twenties. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. It's a good point. Early, but I mean, a trap always plays in Florida. You might see like that gold, old school gold black trap come out, and somebody's just going to be ripping grass and like. All we've heard about is how the grass is gone. Grass is gone. All of a sudden, they're ripping a golden black trap and catching four pounders. So it's gonna be. They can. Uh, I think was it Swindle? I don't think it was Harris Chain. Swindle's open win. It, it's been a number of years now, but I'm was pretty it like sure he Ross was Barnett or something. I was somewhere down in Florida. I thought. I, I'm blanking on the lake though, but I thought he was fishing a shell bed, and I thought he was banging a trap. On the through the shell bed, and you're I could be wrong. Probably not don't, wrong. Don't I'm looking it up me. now to see, but as you can see, his win so first place finish was oh, yeah, it was on Kissimmee. You were right, Kissimmee. 2011. In his three, because I think it was three days, yeah, three day total was 80 pounds, 13 ounces. I've I remember hearing him speak live, telling the story about kind of like middle fortitude and. His co-angler, you know, he he's leading the tournament. He's put up two massive sacks. His co-angler throws a, a trap in there, you know, not even on the the, the shell bed and catches yeah. giants on back-to-back -back casts. Uh, I, I still remember that that story. I thought that was insane. But but yeah, I remember yeah. throwing a trap. 
Yeah, he's somebody who always does good there, but I'm terrified to pick him because when I pick him, he burns me. So I was like, <laughs> like for this event, like my when I first did the picks right after the classic, and I've gone through and changed them a couple times since. I'm like, well, I gotta pick Hackney, I gotta pick Swindle because it's Florida, right? Like they're gonna catch him the way I want to catch him. I'm like, no, nah, it's not that game anymore. And I was like, all right, who do I really want to pick here? And then talking to Kyle, I'm like, crap, now I got to change a couple of my picks again. Like, yep. <laughs> son of a gun. Yep. So, but no, it's it's going to be fun. The event starts Thursday, goes through Sunday, I believe. And uh, I look forward to watching some of the live coverage because we're going to have some crappy weather here Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I might be able to watch a little bit. So nice. That'll be good. So, who do you think is going to win the event? And what will Big Fish be since we didn't cover that? Ooh. Pass. I'm gonna have to think for a minute. <laughs> Let me look at my drain the lake roster real fast. Yeah. I already know who you're picking, Brennan. Good. You're picking Milliken. <laughs> uh I wouldn't I no, he's not available for Drain the Lake because I already took him for the classic. So I I guess I technically can't. Um but no, I mean honestly if if I could pick five people that had like an honest chance in my mind, he'd certainly be one of them. Um right. Man, I don't know. I, I just think, like, uh, with as weird as that place is fishing, by the sounds of it, like, it could be a deal where a local could have a massive advantage, um, honestly. Like Scott um, Martin. And, it, it, and Scott Martin's a hammer Martin. in Florida anyways. Like, I'm not just trying to paint the picture. Like, he's a local, and that's why. Um, I think Scott Martin's got a, a very solid chance. Could I'm, you see, like, an oddball win? Not even saying it, it's an oddball because he's a really good angler, but, like, this might be an event that you don't want to sleep on Kobe Krieger because mm. he lives right there. He, when you, when it gets to like these grimy weird events, he just seems to catch them. Like every time you're like, why Kobe, Kobe Krieger's in the top 10? Like what the heck is going on here? And he's doing something different than everyone else. It's usually like a popper or a top water situation that he arises. And it's that time of year where, I think Kobe Krieger could be a really weird pick to get a win, but it's probably going to be like, truthfully, it's probably going to be an offshore scope do deal that one of these young kids is going to figure out and they're going to live with catching two to three pounders, filling their limit. And then they're going to get one to two big bites every other day. That's going to put them in there. Cause that's usually how the pre-spawn events go down. It's, they get a limit of two pounders, one to two pounders, and they catch two giants. Mm -hmm. So it's, I feel like that's usually what happens. So, and if they're killing the grass, where are these fish going to go? They're going to go real shallow or they're going to go deep to shell beds. Hmm. I I think my brain is telling me somebody like, like a local like Scott Martin, but I'm, I'm going to go, uh, go with gut. I like Brian Schmidt a lot. Um, He's had some success down there. You know, we were talking earlier, great grass fisherman. Um, I'd, I'd like to see him get the win. Yeah, it's been what? Champlain was his last win on the Elite Series, I think, right? Yep, he was runner-up at the Classic last year. And I think that was the – yeah, I think that was his top finish uh, last year was that that runner-up to, uh, to Gussie. I also like a Stetson Blaylock a lot, like just a, a gut pick, you know. Another good gut pick, too, could be like an Austin Felix. Hasn't done much lately, but when it comes to these grimy, weird events, he just seems to always find a school of fish out there by himself. Like the one example I can think of is Santee Cooper a couple of years ago in the fall when they went there and he had that offshore Lake Marion fish all to himself when everyone else was like just kind of junk fishing around. He sat on one school basically for four days and almost won it. He just yeah. never was got it, the big bite. Was it Oahe? Yeah, was he it Oahe Oahe Oahe. where he got the win? Yep. Yeah. A kind of another, like you were saying, weird kind of a, not the bite everybody was expecting, but yeah, he figured him out. Mm -hmm. so i don't know i kind of like dark horse like it seems like whenever you get like one of these weird grimy don't know events it's always somebody that is a dark horse like i haven't heard his name in a while and all of a sudden oh now he's back and 
ride some momentum train the rest of the year because he won and it like re starts their season for him. So mm-hmm. I just hope for a really good event. The thunder showers stay away, but yeah. I guess we can wrap it up there, guys. What do you think? I and think then so. hold on. When when is the next event before we do wrap it up? Is it next week? Like r- right into I think they go right, right into right into St. John's. Is it St. John's? Oh, it is St. John's. That's gonna be a Ooh. weird one. Yeah. Ooh, burning up all is of it? our Florida guys before we're out of Florida. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to be careful with that. I've you know, I'd, Man, I imagine if this imagine if this was flipped because you know there's more spawners probably at St. John's right now than there is Harris Jane because it's just slightly more north. Right. I hope I got my John Cox Scott Martin rotation correct. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't have them reversed. <laughs> well, that would really I burned I them both for Drain the Lake, so I'm I'm ruined. <laughs> yeah, I used them both. I had them I had them switched and I've yeah, I've my 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 little notepads a mess of scratched out names and re <laughs> repenciled in and scratched out again long division yeah. calculus on there <laughs> meteorology <laughs> for some reason but to be honest like for the st john's i don't really like john cox or martin there to be honest so i i'd read unless they can go like way up into the headwaters of st john's but i don't think they when, can run that far in so. 22, when John Cruz won, I'm pretty sure John Cox was second. I think he finished second. Yeah, but I they're know he was, all. I think he was the, catching them on. He was betting fish in the same lake, that one lake where they turn right. I can't think of the name of it, but normally it was off limits Rodman? and it was open for that. Rodman. Yeah, Rodman. And Patty Walters Could have been. is right there. I, so. I don't remember. I don't remember that specific part, but. Yeah, I think like all the top ten came out of Rodman in that St. John, so it's going to be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. And then you had Gary Klaus, who made like the longest run ever to fish one pencil read oh, for two days. He, <laughs> he crushed him for two days, and then yeah. caught one the last day. Or yeah, but it held out. That and that's Florida, right? You catch two yeah. big bags, and you're in it. So it's yeah. wild. But anyways, stay tuned. Um, tomorrow is Tuesday Night Live. We have an awesome guest coming on. Bailey already told me who it is, and I completely forgot. So bear with me here as I pull up. We have, I think, if I remember correctly, it's Emil Wagner. But let me double check that. And I think we're going to dive into that event that just went down on Lin- Linear. Was it the TAA event? Was that what it was called? Yeah, TA where there was no scope, no 360, ah, etc. That could be cool. Just making sure. Yep. Emil Wagner will be on Tuesday night live tomorrow night. Hopefully, we don't have any more technical difficulties. So tune into that. And uh Justin, do you have a kayak fishing weekly this week? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have one. I don't have the uh, the guest or anything lined up just yet, but we're gonna have one. Stay tuned. And I apologize so, uh, for the uh not having one last week i got sucked into that tournament after practice i didn't think i was going to do particularly well and then when i was in the mix i was like uh (laughs) i i i I bailed on on doing a show so i apologize Ah, it's all good things happen so and then uh yes stay tuned we'll be back next monday night for to preview the fancy fishing show for st john's bassmaster elite so i think that's gonna be a fun two-week stretch here and uh thanks everyone for tuning in and hanging out with me and dealing with me being kind of all over the place but now hopefully we get our technical difficulties situated and we will see everyone next week well tomorrow night i guess so man round this out real bad so see ya